finally time to pour the epoxy onto the top of my Kieser lid. I took some time to acquire a few new new caps to keep up the variety. You know, it was a little hard to pluck some caps off, put some caps on, and try to manage the glue to make sure they actually stayed in place. But I've, I've come to the point where I'm ready to pour the epoxy, as I said, so um, I'll show you first before I actually pour the epoxy. I'll tell you a bit about the process that I have planned. So if you don't see behind me, I already put a border, so I'll show you a close-up on the back of the of the lid um, with the with, 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 with So just to talk about the process that I plan on using to pour on the epoxy, create the bar top look. As you see, you may see behind me, I already have a tin foil and duct tape and border that I placed on there to kind of create a border for the back so the epoxy wouldn't leak off and I'll keep my fingers crossed that it actually works. Um, because the website that I looked online said that he used painter's tape and then attached the duct tape to the tin foil and then taped it on. But I didn't have painter's tape or masking tape. I thought I did, but I couldn't find it. So I used thick uh, packing tape. Um, just uh, so when you pull off the duct tape, um, that you won't have like, a sticky edge to the back, which for me wouldn't really matter, but I just thought I'd follow it as much as possible. And I'll show you a close up what it looks like from behind in a minute. And then what I have here, as for the instructions, is that I, you basically pour out equal amounts of the two parts of the epoxy solution, and then you mix them together. I got these from Home Depot, just paints, you know, stirrers. And then I'm going to use uh, the paint stir and this plastic spreader um, or spatula, whatever you want to call it, um, to help spread the epoxy after I pour it on. So I'm going to go ahead, get everything set up, and then I'll show you when I'm pouring the epoxy, of course. Okay, so for the brand I'm using is Park Super Glaze Pour On, a, a pour on Finish and Preservative. This is an ultra glossy epoxy. Um, so um, there's two there's two um, solutions that you have to mix. One is the resin itself, and one is the activator. So you're supposed to pour, like as I said, equal parts of it. You know, as much as you need. So I'm gonna pour basically half of each of these, and then see how much more I need. I have a second box. Um, of it, you know, just in case. So, in each of these, there's 16 ounces. So, I'm gonna pour eight ounces, or actually, you know, pour 12 ounces of each, and then mix them together because they are 24 ounce containers. Is to pour in the center and then let it, and let it spread. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it, pour some of it down the center, or most of it. Most of these tend to self-level, so you don't want to kind of force it. So it looks like it's spreading on its own. So I'm just going to continue to pour it, pour it on, watch it, keep track of it as it spreads. Alright guys, so my border here in the back has been a slight, or a pretty much a failure um, in that it's not staying tight enough around the hinges and, and 
and some of the back and then between the hinges so I keep having to make sure that it doesn't leak um, or and I keep trying to stem leaks and keeping it tight on the corners but it's not really working perfectly um, so as you see here I did get to spread it you know pretty much all over and I have a good coating but it's not as even as I would like so I'm gonna have to try to even it out a little bit more before it starts to really dry because I can feel it thickening already um, as I try to get it to a point where I'm happy with it but um, so what I've been doing also is another tip I found online is to take a lighter like this and with a flashlight and look for air bubbles and use the heat to melt the bubbles so I see one right here so then I just take the 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 lighter and just put it the heat up to it and then it usually just pops the bubbles pretty quickly so so yeah so that's what I'm doing um, so what I'm gonna have to do is let this set for over the weekend because I'm over Thanksgiving weekend I'm shooting this the Wednesday before Thanksgiving um, I'm not gonna be home so I'm gonna basically have to let this set for a few days for over the weekend until maybe Sunday and then come back and after buying another butt package of the epoxy solution mix and then pour I think one more package will do it it's very the stuff is expensive so I'm only gonna buy one more and hopefully that'll be more than enough to finish off this project but um, for now this is what it basically looks like I don't know how well it's coming through on camera it's looking pretty cool so far um, but I'm gonna go ahead and continue the maintenance and then once I am putting the finishing touches on I'll show you what it looks like hey guys so we're back so I bought another package of the epoxy at Home Depot and just a quarter price just so you know um, I'm, I'm already about $75 into the epoxy which meaning means that each kit which comes with again the, the two parts the activator and the resin itself cost at Home Depot $24.99 plus tax so I decided that you know I'd make a new border which you can see here in the back which I used masking tape and duct tape instead of Gorilla Tape shipping tape and tin foil and it's giving me similar problems and what I think the main cause of the problems are twofold one that there's a few caps as you may have seen in the homebrew Wednesdays where I showed this that they are sticking a touch over the edge so that's kind of pushing whatever border I've put up back a little bit and also in the corners um, there's a it's hard to not have a little bit of a gap there and I keep having to try to plug it up As you saw, I you know applied the epoxy, went through the whole process, and showed you a little bit of the cleanup process afterwards due to the excessive leakage that I experienced. But after trimming off the, a lot of the tape and the excess epoxy as much as I could, I'll probably do some more later, you know, over time over the next week or so. But I trimmed off as much as I could, you know, and to, in order to show you the final product. And to my surprise, the back. Where I, you know, where I put the border is not as terrible or as bad as I think of it. 
as I thought it would be, but I am going to go over it in a way and showing you things that, you know, went wrong, not to focus on the negative, but just to, like, if you want to do this yourself with your keys or, or a tabletop or whatever that you need to build a border for, or in general, if you're just putting epoxy, um, it would be cool, good, I just thought it would be a good tip for me to show you what went wrong despite me being happy with the final result, as I said. So, let's start from the top before we get to the back. So, as you can see, I don't know how well it's showing up, as I have an extra lamp there for light. Um, but, as you can see, if you just pan over it, it looks fine. It looks, you know, real, like I did a really, really good job, which I think I did. Um, but, um, besides the fact that I need to trim a little more in the back, but... Um, beyond that, um, there's t a few areas here, a couple of small little holes, like one right there from where I put my finger there while it was still drying, because I thought, you know, in order to smooth something over with my finger, but there are two holes, and luckily only two, um, you know, where that happened. And then, there's a bunch of areas... A bunch of bigger areas where I don't know how well that'll come up on camera, but there are some pockets where there's a bunch of air bubbles. But it looks pretty cool that way, just you know, because it's beer and you know, and there are beer bubbles around certain areas. So not so bad. It's only really centralized. Main there's a little one over here on the left side when you're facing the keyser, but. It's mostly towards the middle, so overall, you know, or middle slash the right. So it's overall pretty good, you know. And I think the reason why there are more air bubbles is, number one, because maybe I didn't look find them in time. I think mainly because one of the things which I didn't film, which is when I was putting on the second batch of epoxy, or the third package of epoxy, where I filled in the edges, filled in the back part, like at least this portion and then filled in the front there's where there was air getting in from the back and the front so i think that's what made the air bubbles the way they are but overall again if you look at it like this if you're just coming you know looking at it overall it looks really cool no matter with the imperfections or not so now bringing you towards the back you know i cleaned it up as much as i could for now as i said this side side where the temperature controller looks a lot cleaner because there was less leaks on this side overall so even in the back rows you could see from this angle with the light where it still looks pretty filled in so it's not really off kilter that much besides for the caps are poking through a little bit over here then um, for the next area of close-up would be over here in this corner where it's a lot messier because there's a lot of dried on epoxy on both sides of the hinge and therefore it's harder to get the excess tape off but this is the back and it's going to be pushing back against the wall once I clean up all the stuff that I threw on the floor I was cleaning up and these back few caps this Stevens point cap is not all the way under because it was bent to begin with but overall when it's going to be pushed against the wall um, you're not going to really see any of the really imperfections in this back little bit and um, luckily, most of it is submerged in the epoxy, so it's not going to, once you put it against the wall, it's not going to really look so uneven, even though the epoxy isn't level on this back row that, that well. But overall, it's still, the caps in front of the back row, um, are still, are still fill, you know, are still nicely submerged, so it doesn't really throw off. You know the look of the overall thing and if you have any questions of course comment below or comment on this blog post wherever you're watching this video and i look forward to sharing more of my home brewing diy projects with you in the future cheers